have several little problems with this machine so I decided to pimp my lathe first of all we have this tool holder it's holding down on a cylindric part and the corners there's too much stick out so several times I have a chatter problem just because of there's not enough rigidity in this system there's even two of these four corners that are a little bit bent down so I'm gonna rectify this in the shaper and make a new tool holder post thing I don't know how you call it uh, make it bigger one I would like to make it square so it will be more rigid and maybe a little bit bigger uh, diameter uh, the shank here we'll see the second thing is this plate in the uh, tailstock this plate the angle of the the V system is not correct so I have to make a new plate also shaper work but inside here in the middle of this plate is a big hole where the bolt goes through and this plate is also a big hole where the uh, this uh, shank goes through and then is uh, bolted in or welded in uh, I don't know but we'll, we'll see how, how we fix it so to do that I need a forge out chuck so I can put my parts in here and bore them out because of course making these big holes on the drill press is not possible there's just one little problem I don't have a forge out chuck well in fact I do have a forge out chuck this one is brand new I just bought it it's never been lathed it's a 200 millimeter chuck and in inch it gives us uh, almost 8 inch now this is way bigger than the tree jaw the tree jaw is 155 and 155 gives us 6 inch it's way bigger but that's not really a problem I have more than enough space to put it now to take uh, this uh, chuck off I stole a bit the idea from rolling metal it's not mine I welded a nut on a piece of uh, thing here and we put it in here ready to go that's all it takes so rolling metal thanks for the tip you see it works really fine and of course here comes another problem this is the spindle nose and the thread on the spindle nose is has a pitch of 4.5 millimeters 4.5 millimeter thread pitch and the maximum this machine can cut in thread is a pitch of 3 millimeters so I don't know who designed it but I don't think it's really smart to make a machine that cannot even cut his own threads but it is what it is I think I came up with a solution we said this thread impossible to cut on the lathe this back plate impossible to fit here so that's not gonna work so what, what I'm gonna do is make out of this a kind of flange that fits the outside and then that will register here in this inside uh, diameter 
and of course resistor up here. The only problem is now this part, uh, don't worry, it, it uh, came from an old barge and the big boss he was uh, so kind to, to tell us we could take what we want so uh, there's no pollution problem nowhere, this uh, flange is perfectly legal. So this flange is 340 millimeters, it's uh, 13 inch. I marked it because uh, I cannot uh, remember this, my, my memory system is getting old. So this is too big to fit my legs. The only solution is gonna be... To cut this thing took me about two minutes. Well, maybe a, a little bit more. It was a bit uh, back-breaking work, but I did it. I survived, no problem. Now I would like, first of all, to copy this bolt pattern here, these three holes on this one. That seemed to work. Let's mount it on the lathe and start make some chips. So now of course there's a new little problem, it's the carriage is gonna touch my uh, workpiece. Maybe you see a little bit better from this side. I do a little handheld camera filming because otherwise it's not really possible. <coughs> so what I did, I put in my boring bar and I hope that this system will work. I put a little outline here, 200 millimeter. Poor little machine is screening for help, but uh, no choice, I have to do it this way. I switched to a high speed steel cutter. This high 
high speed steel it can more handle this uh, interrupted cut than uh, insert I suppose that's what they mean with chip control I don't know I really got to love it left to do for this side of the the chuck plate is make this uh, recess 120 millimeters uh, wide and four millimeters deep I have to cut off a little bit my cutting tool this insert of course because uh, as you can see, I hope you can see this side is touching the rim I'm making so if I hold it like this you can see it's touching so I have to cut it out a bit alright now like this it looks maybe a little bit bizarre but that's not a problem because all this uh, YouTube channel is bizarre so no problem doesn't matter let's give it a try so in theory this should be more or less the finished product for this side of course other side I have to do so let's uh, check the double check ah. that looks good 500 of a millimeter below. Ha! Huh. I can live with that. Is that a fit or what? Almost not even need of bolts. This is uh, absolutely perfect. Great. I'm gonna bolt it on and do this side. I stopped for a moment because for I don't know what reason when I started to cut the height of these uh, bolt holes the tool started to dig in now I know what's happening give it a little try that feels good no wiggle all right How 
to find the uh, centering for the four holes for the four jaw chuck. Now, if you don't have the center anymore, that could be a little problem. Of course, you cannot take your ruler and measure from uh, nothing. It's not possible. Even between the two holes, you cannot center your uh, little scale. But if you have a thing like this, I don't know how you call it, this is really easy. I center and this ring outside here is 80 millimeters, so I center 40 and 40. First I drew one uh, line on the lathe because my cutting tool is uh, perfectly centered. I draw one line, one line that we copy the other side, yeah, easy, no problem, and then you can measure, put it on 40 both sides, follow the line, and then center punch at 56 millimeters, gives us total distance 112. If that's done, we move it line number three and we can still center four and four yeah no problem Indi uh, and then we mark this point turn it around align with line number three align with four and four and we can mark this point same thing scale, mark it, take this one again, center it, four and four and then center punch at 56 every side. Easy peasy, right? That seems to work. All that's left to do now is cut this rim off, make the same uh, diameter than this one, and of course, cut off the bolts. Unfortunately, I have to stop this project right here. It's getting late, and uh, tomorrow I have to go to the hospital for a couple of days. Oh, but uh, don't worry, nothing special. Uh, I, I will survive. Maybe you would like to see this uh, in action. Uh, trust me, not as much uh, as I do, but I have to clean out these uh, ways here and oil them, and I have to uh, finish this rim here and then see if I, I can line it out. Now it's just mounted on, it's not lined out. There's a little bit of a uh, wobble in it, but uh, I, will, I, will, I will get it out, it's not really a problem. In a four jar it's never a problem. So I hope you found it interesting. I'm uh, perfectly aware that there's lots of people who may, made uh, back plate videos, but this was my way of doing things. It's not a how-to video, it's how I do.